mixed reaction. I'm sure he dreamed many times of fighting in front of his hometown fans here at the Dome, but probably never thought he would be doing it in the shadow of another Providence fighter. Former world champion Eddie Mustafa Muhammad is trainer leading the way. Spina wasn't completely committed to boxing growing up, unlike Manfredo. He played some basketball, wrestled, full football. But he said the one thing he could always do is he could punch. And it is that big punch from a full-size super middleweight. That's the reason he thinks he'll be the victor tonight. The Tournament of Contenders in association with Classic Entertainment and Sports presents a contender special. Put up or shut up! An evening of boxing sanctioned by the Rhode Island Department of Business Regulation Division, Commercial Licensing, Racing, and Athletics. Michael Marks, Director, Jeffrey Greer, Associate Director, William DeLuca, Chief Licensing Examiner. Tonight, it's Put Up or Shut Up, a 12-round super middleweight main event. Your judges are Clark San Martino, Stephen Epstein, and Edward Scuncio. Our referee is Charlie Dwyer. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in at 168 pounds. He's wearing trunks of gold and black. His record, 19 wins, no losses, one draw, 14 knockouts. In his corner, the legendary Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. With his recent defeat of Jesse Brinkley, he calls himself a contender killer. Will he strike again tonight from the Silver Lake section of Providence, Rhode Island? Across the ring, his opponent weighed in at 167 and three quarters pounds. He's wearing black and white trunks. A professional record of 25 wins, three losses, 11 wins, coming by way of knockout. In his corner, 
honor the legendary Freddie Roach and his father, famous for his heart, his drive, and his commitment to his hometown from the Federal Hills section of Providence, Rhode Island. Fight, obey my commands at all times. By the way, trunks are good. Shake hands, good luck. Long time New England rep Charlie Dwyer. It is scheduled for 12. The ring experience and the numbers will show an edge for Manfredo, but beyond that is the experience of fighting in this type of a setting under this kind of pressure. Manfredo has been doing it for two years now, and this is by far the biggest stage for that man. Joey Spina. Round one. Manfredo has not been in the ring for eight months. Spina hopes that gives him an edge. Spina was last in the ring only three months ago. Spina comes back with a left hand there after Manfredo tried the combination. You can see that Knockout ratio 70% for Speedo. Manfredo 39%. Goes to the body twice with the left hand, does Manfredo. But there is an advantage in activity or disadvantage in inactivity with Manfredo not being in the ring for eight months and Speedo only being in the ring three months ago. It's going to show itself early on because as rounds go by, if there is any rust with Manfredo, the rounds will get rid of them. The best opportunity for Spina. Spina digging to the body, something called for in the fight plan. You can see right away, Spina, physically the bigger man. Light heavyweight, his first 12 fights. Last eight fights, has fought at super middleweight. Manfredo, his entire career between middleweight and junior middleweight, only moved up to super middleweight in his last fight. Spino's walk around weight when he's not training, when he's not cutting weight to make a fight is 195 pounds. No better way when you're the bigger man to show that advantage than to go to the smaller man's body. And that's exactly what Speed is trying to do. Spino likes going to the body. The problem is every once in a while he does that. Goes to the body from too far away, as though, as we talk about in the fight plan. And when he does that, leaves himself wide open for counters from the quicker Manfredo. Quicker and more skillful, Peter Manfredo. Manfredo, better technically. Absolutely correct, Joe. He has honed those skills at the wild card gym with Freddie Roach, one of the best trainers in the entire world out in L.A. And it was really a great decision at Manfredo, man. A very difficult decision when his father had been training him his whole life and he said, I need to take this to the next level. I love my dad, but we argue too much. I need to be with Freddie Roach. And he has grown and developed since that decision tremendously. As we've already stated, Spina, bigger physically. The problem is he's also bigger with his punches like that. Bigger, fatter, and wider. That was wide, and it was nowhere near Peter Manfredo. And the straighter punches of Manfredo can get there first. But he just got caught a good left hook. He did he back it up? Spina on the attack. The end of the last round, we talked about the wide punching of Spina, but where it can be effective is when you pull back from those wide punches. Manfredo late in the round pulled back and pulled into the path of those warm shots of Spina. Here's another look. As Manfredo pulls back, he pulls directly back into the long looping shots and the strong shots of Spina. High energy atmosphere here in Providence. Two fighters, you don't hear this often, announced from the different areas of the city you're fighting in. 
Silver Lake for Joey Spina, the famed Federal Hill for Peter Manfredo, and that was an intense first round. You know, Manfredo, I believe, has more options here. He's a better technically smaller man, a faster man, but he can go outside, he can box, he can use the ring a little bit, keep Spino, who needs to be set on those wide legs. Look at how wide the legs of Spino. He needs to be set. Manfredo can move around, make circles, keep him from getting set, keep him from being effective. Also, Manfredo can go inside, believe it or not, in the eye of the storm and punch inside the wide shots of Spino. Spino can only do one thing, come forward and try to use his strength and catch him with one of those power shots. Three punch combination for Manfredo, left hook, straight right, left to the body. But of all the options are in the favor of Manfredo. One thing he can't afford to do, Joe, and that's to pull out from too close, because then he will allow the wider, less technical punches of Spina to be effective. You pull back from a wide punch from too close, you will eat leather on your way out. It is very important for Manfredo to negotiate distance, either be all the way inside or all the way outside. It's about technique. 
technique. It's about mental control. It's about confidence. It's about executing. And all those things were done by the smaller Manfredo tonight. Punching inside the wide shots of Spino. We talked about it earlier. Spino, when he throws wide shots and strong shots, he leaves himself open. And Manfredo took advantage of those openings all night long with straight by the hand. Look back at the third round. The right hand started to rein in in the second round, and right off the bat in the third round, he came after him, Teddy. Well, we talked about it early on that the right hand of Manfredo would play a big part of the fight tonight for him, and it did. And the reason the wide left hook of Spina would leave an opening, and Manfredo took advantage of that opening and got inside with his faster, shorter shots. Or again, you can see Manfredo comfortable inside and outside. Comfortable inside with the straight shots that he got inside those wide hands of Spina. And he was also comfortable on the outside using those quick legs. And then watch from the corner of Joey Spina. The towel comes in as referee Charlie Dwyer is counting him out. And this is where Peter Manfredo and the emotion and all the rage and the bad blood, it just got the best of him and his father as they were still in Spina's face. Not great sportsmanship, but folks, tonight, this had little to do with being a sport. This was personal. And that man throwing the towel in was a man that understands how to take care of a fighter. Former light heavyweight champion, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, doing the right thing, reading his fighter physically and even mentally with the body language of a spent and beaten Joey Spina. For the official particulars, let's send it up to the ring to Jim Connor. Ladies and gentlemen, in one minute and one second of the third round, referee Charlie Dwyer stops the fight. The winner by TKO, the pride of Providence, Peter Manfredo Jr. Peter Manfredo Jr. He has owned this building this year. Two times he has fought in the spotlight with big crowds here. Two times he has come away with third round and Providence, knockout wins. Join me in another round of applause for your other son, Joey K.O. Kid Spina. Let him hear it. And three with 12 knockouts. The ring rust, an eight-month layoff? I think not. Manfredo was razor sharp. Right hand after right hand, and Spina could not deal with it. He turned it on in the third round. He never let up. There's the big right that got things started as Manfredo was on his way to the most emotionally filled win of his career. When we come back, we will hear from Peter Manfredo Jr. on the heels of his knockout win. Stay with us. Guys, just a reminder. The Dunkin' Donuts Center in downtown Providence still buzzing here on this put up or shut up contender special. Joe Tessator and Teddy Atlas now join ringside by the pride of Providence, Peter Manfredo Jr. coming off of the third round knockout of Joey Spina. How did that one feel? A lot of emotions running through you tonight. Uh, I just felt great, but you know, I was focused on in the game plan. I knew I was a step above him, and obviously it showed tonight. He really had nothing for me, but then again, he got himself, he got his 15 minutes of fame on TV like he wanted, and made his payday, but I'm looking for bigger and better things. Peter. You've always been an honest fighter. Are you that good, or was his flaws that bad tonight? I don't know. I'll let you be the judge of that. You're the master of that. I'm just going there, and I get a paycheck. You, you know? did what you had to do, and you did what was available to do, and you proved once again it's not about the size of the man. It's about the skills and the technique and, of course, the mind of a man. Right, and the heart of the man. You know, um, I got the heart of a lion, an Italian warrior. I wear the IW on my trunks, and that's why. I'll fight anybody. I'm a throwback to the old school. They call me at Freddy's Gym LaMotta. 
Lamada, Lamada. I'll take three to give one. And straight right hands beat wide left hooks. Straight right hands. All straight punches beat wide punches. Let's talk about those straight right hands as we have you look at some of your highlights of your fine work tonight. The plan was executed perfectly. Yeah, very perfect. That's what we worked on in the gym. We knew this kid was wide. You know, a lot of feints. We worked with Freddie, a lot of jabs, setting everything off the jab. The right hand's there. His left hand's down. His right hand's always down for hooks. He's just a wide puncher, and he tries to knock you out, but he got old school. What, what happened to the criticism of you moving up in weight that, ah, oh, he won't be able to punch at 168 pounds? Well, you're punching this building pretty good this year. Two third-round knockouts. Hey, forget it. In Providence, I go home, I have my grandma's veal pizza. Oh. That's the key. <laughs> and fight night, I have the raviolis. Forget it. I'm, I'm full of vinegar, olive oil, everything. I, I'll knock anybody out. Popeye with his spinach, yeah, Teddy. Popeye with his spinach. Peter, I was saying going into this fight that even though he was the bigger man, you were technically the better man. You had more choices, more options how to go about it. You could box on the outside, or you could actually go in the den of the lion and go inside those wide shots. At what point did you decide to go inside and not box on the outside? When he started getting a little confidence after the first round, you know, he... Uh he, he survived the round. I, was, I don't know, maybe I won the round by a little bit. I just wanted to punish this kid. For all that stuff he talked, I wanted to punish him right off the bat. I just wanted a round to get warmed up and to get going. I wish I punished him for a couple more rounds, to be honest with you. Well, there's no doubt you keep improving fight after fight. You've been with Freddie Roach, and you, you keep improving. You're dedicating yourself. There have been rumors. We've heard about a Roy Jones pay-per-view. Joe Calzaghe, world champion, won tonight. What is next for Peter Manfredo Jr.? Whatever the contender, I'm a contender fighter. Uh, I went back with them. I'm very happy to be with them. Wherever they put me, I'm ready. Providence is here. They got my back. I'll fight anybody. Throw them in the ring, I'll fight them. But will anybody want to come here and fight you? Peter Manfredo Jr. in his hometown gets the big win against Joey Spina. Third round knockout. And they will be celebrating in the Federal Hill section tonight.